Patrick at Art Storefronts back with another customer interview. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have Art Storefronts customer and friend John Lowry of Humble Donkey Studio. And John, welcome. And thanks for joining me. I'm glad to be here and just taking you to the scenery. You're in Round Top, Texas. I'm located in a place called Hinkle Square Market. People are just now getting open. This is the front of our building. As you can see, it's an old pole barn from the no oh, way. Way going inside what we've got. Maybe just to give context, I'll start off with just a little bit of a tour. So where our storefronts plays a huge role, and I can get into all of the aspects of it, this main part of the studio, you can see it's got high ceilings. We do sell primarily my art, but we also have jewelry and apparel and home goods. But if you see on the walls, everything you're seeing here are jaclays. Mm -hmm. These are jaclays that we get through Bay Photo, through, of course, art storefronts. Did you already sell the originals, John? I'm going to show you where the originals are. This is a very important product because these are what we call mini Gs. All they mm -hmm. are are jaclays on canvas, mm -hmm. but it's a great way to sell a smaller version. We also sell sign prints. This has nothing to do with Bay Photo, but this is a lot of this stuff was started when I started this, but all of this product comes from Bay. All of these are all fine art paper jaclays. Here's, mm -hmm. you know, example this one dancing we've got some that are framed and matted and i'll go upstairs later but this is the part here this is the gallery where i saw my originals wow and i currently only have 10 originals that are available so you'll run across every now and then where there's a red dot that means it's sold but i predominantly frame all of my originals this is quite a large one here so i have this fun back entrance this goes into another courtyard area kimasabi which is well known the barbecue joint and a bar i've no got a quote here in the entry. This happens to be a hybrid between an original and a jaclay. This is an embellished jaclay. It's one of my most popular pieces and you can probably see the texture where I've come in and embellished. Yeah, and I love that, embellished. This is a blank wall where normally there'd be art, but I take out the lighting and it just blends in. Same thing with this wall, but just giving we've got a seating area. And then this is an important room that we added. I don't know how well this is coming across, but this is again, jaclay storage. So we Amazing. have a lot of product that's in back storage and i'm i'll share anything with any but anyone in the audience that wants to know how we do things i'll go ahead and take you upstairs this is another product we sell a shocking amount of coasters and magnets with my art i can get into some of those numbers and i have shared those in the past with the small winds audience frame jaclays as you go up the stairs this barn is built in the 1800s it is quirky at best it is <laughs> a pain in the ass in other ways I have created a lot of products. Some of these patches are based on paintings I've done, and we sell them as loose patches, but we also sell them on hats. And I've done no other way. graphics. So this is an art star front product. This comes from Guten. Uh, we oh. sell the t-shirts with art. This is more general apparel. I've got all sorts of t-shirt designs, but a lot of them come from Goot, others mm -hmm. from other vendors. And then we've got home goods and other fun stuff. But this is pretty cool to see the view. It's a weird building, but it creates some neat shapes. Well, amazing. The, just the, the wall here, the two stories. Yeah, incredible. And then this is where we predominantly have stuff for kids, but it also incorporates Chiclay. I've got a blank wall over there, going to fill. So that, anyway, that's the tour of the place. Absolutely amazing. And we should say that we're starting this interview off with John giving us a tour of his retail shop, which is in Round Rock, Texas. Round Top, Round very top. important. There is a oh. Round Rock, but Round Rock's big. Round Top only has 90, 87 people in its population. Oh, wow. Tiny. Yeah. Which is absolutely amazing. And one of the things that I wanted to like deeply unpack with you because I'm just mega fascinated about it in this particular moment in time is this notion of, I'm, I've never been anti-gallery. I've never been anti-revenue source. The gallery model is the 50-50 split not knowing who's purchasing. I love, love the artist-owned gallery. And I think these are like, it's a thing now. It's becoming more and more prominent. You're seeing more and more artists do it. And like, we're getting the numbers and the numbers on it are incredible. But let me tell you, it is not a bed of roses because as John will tell you, he's the only employee in here today. And if somebody <laughs> comes walking through the door, he He's going to have to go to work. How long have you had the gallery? So I started it in March of 2016. Okay. And that was followed from the fact that I had a little bit of a hard time getting my work into some of the galleries here in Round Top. And Round Top is located between Austin and Houston, really smack in the middle. Okay. 
And my wife and I had bought land out near here, and mm -hmm. that's how I got back into painting. I was a commercial illustrator for many years, and so I was a professional artist for many years and mm -hmm. got to where I'd stopped painting. And I was walking around in Round Top, and I saw these little log cabins. In fact, I could take you back outside and show you the one I originally rented. I was walking by. This one was available, $750 a month. I had no idea if anybody would like my art at $750 all. $750 a month, too? What a great rate. Yeah, a great rate. And, of course, that, that cabin was only maybe 400 square feet feet but I was in there for about a year and it did really well and people liked my art so then I saw this barn come available and at that time it was probably only about 1500 square feet and they were probably charging I'm going to say 15 or 1600 a month we yes. sent it by another thousand deal. square feet we've constantly remodeled in here now at the time this is before I knew anything about art storefronts because art storefronts contacted me it was a sales call I was going to other local vendors to get Jaclays to have for sale okay. in the store and it was 2017 got the call about art storefronts and we were like let's go for it we did the full enchilada whatever the total full price was at the time built the website and there were a couple of reasons why it made sense. For one, fulfillment for your own store by having the interface, which I know people get confused, but you know, it, this is licensing of software. We're, all we're doing is licensing software from art storefronts and they've got the playbooks and all sorts of other things. But that ability to be able to, if you were to try to create a website yourself that does what art storefronts cost, it'll cost you maybe as much as $100,000 by using programmers. It's very expensive to do what yeah. they already did. They did the work my in my other life i do own a marketing and branding firm that's in houston i started that by the way both these businesses started on shoestrings i started that other business when i was 23 it's going to be 34 years old this wow. year oh, i I have a big staff there and they've been there for a long time. And when I got into this crazy idea of wanting to be a painter, they took over. And, but so I've been in the business of building dynamic websites uh, as part of, so I've got web developers and designers and writers. So I know firsthand because we designed, we created many e-commerce sites. I know firsthand how much work goes into creating what Art Storefronts has done for us as artists. So I jumped on it knowing this is brilliant. The immediate benefit for us was it sure made it a lot easier easier to use that interface to order product for our own store. And this is what I know. Sometimes I'll, you, you may hear comments. It's not fair to have your own gallery. There's nothing fair about it. And, and there was nothing cheap about it. And there was, and again, this is, I just started with a shoestring with just a hope that people would like it, but to constantly put money and invest into your business. And the fact that I'm here today, instead of at home painting, you have to make sacrifices along the way, but that interface allowed us to keep product in the store. And I've shared numbers. If anybody is a member of small wins, I, at the end, of every year publish how much I've done in June. Mm -hmm. So we have the blend of what we sell in the store. People can grab and go. People mm -hmm. are in the store and I'll show you this. We've set up, it's usually the art storefronts website is displayed here. So when mm -hmm. people come in and they go, I don't see in your store exactly what I want, we can take them over to here and we're on the Art Storefronts website and show them sizes and how it could look on a wall and go through and then we'll create a custom order for them. And it's actually paid for in the store, but then my wife, Laurie, goes home and places the order with Art Storefronts mm -hmm. and it gets shipped directly to the customer. And Such then the other thing that we do, which everybody you know does, of course, is we sell directly online. I, and those are yesterday, I guess get an email and somebody has done a $600 order of one of my images as a canvas. That is really fun to me that somebody has gone online, found the art, bought it. I, I never touch it. What Art Storefronts does is just brilliant for us that we have a revenue stream and we're not, we don't have to do much. Now, how those people found me, I do have the advantage that I know a lot of people come to Round Top, believe it or not, this tiny little town, see the stuff and then later go home and decide, oh, I really like that guy's art. In fact, we created a brochure that when people, let me see I can show you this. When people come into our store and we tell them you can order this online, we have all the instructions of the one, two, three, four. I'm trying to get in there. Uh, yeah. Pick, pick the the media type, pick the size, pick the finishing, frame or not frame. We even talk about if you want other product, if you want a t-shirt or a phone case, how to do that. But we create this because everything is about how you make it easier for a customer to buy your... Always, yeah. And so we are now approaching in pure online sales $100,000 since we started with art storefronts. 
but I've got to add it up. I know we're in the well over a million dollars in Jaclays that we've sold, but I don't exactly know what that number is because this year I could look. I don't want to mess things up. I'm not a technology guy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how important that is to people, but we sell a lot of Jaclays and we sell a lot of other things that are art related products with coasters and then the prints that we do. Anyway, I've been babbling. I probably should take questions from you so that you can help me lead me down a path and me. Yeah, I'm amazed. I'm amazed at the whole entire setup i'm amazed at it that how reasonable the rent is, is round top sort of a, a tourist stop and kind of like a fun little weekend type of a destination yes it is so really where it got known was from two reasons one they have the fest a big music venue and this is like chamber music violins and stuff i honestly don't really listen to i they have a, an incredible music venue that's like shockingly why is it here in this town i think i'm a hog who was the daughter of a famous texas governor she was a big part in bringing that here the other reason why it became popular out here is they started an antique fair that has grown to where it's twice a year predominantly March and then in October and this is where tents and a lot of temporary businesses set up and people bring in antiques and sell them. When in 2016 there were only a handful of year-round businesses here there were a few galleries all of mm -hmm. which rejected me all of which are no longer here anymore I must add. Yep my drop anything, <laughs> my drop whoop. but we created something that was we have a very fun environment we always offer free beer and wine to, to guests but we are year round and over time we've now got gosh i'm going to say nine or ten restaurants four or five really great bars and now probably close to 50 year round retail shops so we do well, we'd love to have more artists here there's only one other real gallery here and they sell lots of different multiple artists in their gallery mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful gallery i love the space but it's always helpful i wish there were 10 art galleries here and I know some people go wouldn't that be competition for you what you want is when you have to drive an hour and a half from either Houston or Austin further from other cities to come here if people are real art buyers they want to know that there's going to be multiple places for them to shop what we get oftentimes are the accidental art buyers they come to round top don't even know why and yes it's a great weekend place because we have some of the best lodging we've got boutique hotels it is I highly recommend coming just because it's a cool place to be and it's we have great stars because we don't have any city lights near us. I think the closest big town would be either Brenham on one end and on the other end would be LaGrange, but they're both good 20, 25 miles or so from Round Top. But people come in here and I, I've always said maybe only 10% of people really care about art. I, I don't know this statistically, but you can see that people wander around and there are a lot of people that walk through the gallery and don't even look at the art. They could care less. That's why we have so many other things, apparel and yeah. home goods. But it's the fun ones for me are the ones that go, I didn't know I was going to buy art and they come in here and buy art. And the great thing about the originals certainly cost more and there are people that are first time buyers of originals. What's your, what's your range on your originals? Just out of they run usually anywhere from two to four dollars a square inch. It's just based on my mood, but I, I mean, I can show you some examples of things. This, which is sold, that's a 36 by 48 and it sold for $4,500. Mm-hmm. But $45 to a lot of people might be like a fortune. And so we do sell jaclays of it. In fact, I know we just had a special order that somebody just did. And I know it's already been shipped out by Bay Photo of that piece. It just so happens that buyer hasn't taken it home yet because they're building a home. But it's these people that come in here. These We sell the what we call the mini Gs. And I'm going to show you. We sign them on the side. Or I sign them on the side. I don't know if you can see that. My camera. Oh, works. yeah. We can see it. We sell these for $125 each. And I think our cost shipped is probably around $40 from Bay Photo. Okay. And gosh, I wish I had the memory. I should have written some of this down. But I mean, we probably sold close to $50,000 worth of that product just last year. So it's one thing I may sell. Last year, I did about $100,000 in originals. Okay. And that sounds like a great number. But with the reproductions, we probably did another $200,000 in total. So the act of painting, doing a painting and selling a painting is great. But what's more exciting and i'll show you one example this particular piece i did in 2018 it was a small original is 24 by 20 it's up there it's called lend me your ear i have here a jaclay that is this is a 48 by 40 frame jaclay that we have priced for 1250 dollars this particular image the original was about 1400 dollars mm-hmm 
I sold I sold that original for fourteen fifteen hundred dollars, but I've done probably I bet close to sixty thousand dollars in reproductions of that one image. Nothing better than that. That's the dream. Yeah, and I will say this: one of the critical things that any artist that wants to sell jaclays must do is you've got to get a, a good scan of your art. So I'm going to show you a jaclay. This is a jaclay of a multimedia piece I did of crawfish, and I had cut up old books. You can see the detail is. I love it. I love a crawfish boil. So I take my pieces to a place in Houston that scans them. And that scan probably costs $250. Mm -hmm. But to make a great reproduction, you've got to start off with something great. And I hear that people are trying to take pictures of their work with their iPhones or God knows what. Here's the original of that same piece. The lighting is a little bit more harsh in here when you're over the phone. All of that detail that you saw in the jaclay and the color accuracy and the texture, it is all there in the jaclays. And so it looks just like the original. So when I saw that original, that's great. But it's the fact that I can sell infinitely, the infinite number of that piece in the future now. And for size, Intuity. all these products, the look at the acrylic trays. People love these things. Yeah, they're great. So that acrylic tray or the coffee mugs, we sell these in the store of my art. So exciting. That, in fact, that new product that we're going to, I forget what it's called. So my wife, I'm fortunate, my wife, she's she runs our website for us. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's new capability with being able to show showcase that kind of product and be able to promote it on the Instagram. And Patrick, you could take a moment to explain what I'm horribly trying to explain better yeah. than I. Yeah. And that's not, and I don't even care about that because that's not the most interesting thing. I'm just fascinated by your story in the sense that you took the leap. You took the leap in a, in a small town. One, that you're able to operate this gallery. People are going to cringe when you say this, but how many days a week are you open? We're open Wednesday to Sunday. And Wednesday I'm usually just here on Saturday. So Wednesday is a short day. It's uh, noon to four. And and in the beginning, I would work this store by myself, but over time as it grew, I actually upstairs had a little place where I would paint during the day because many days in those early days, there'd be nobody in here. And of course, there's nobody in here right now because it's early, number one, and number two, it's raining outside and it's all outdoor here. But to add employees and have them come in makes a huge difference because they can be in here. It, it'd shock you. There could be moments on a Saturday where you have 30 to 40 people in here wow. and we'll have, ideally, you gotta have four people in the store you gotta have two people at the checkout camera here the checkout area yeah. ringing people up my wife and i can if people are looking at art i can go over there and tell stories about it like somebody's going oh tell me about this piece oh this is it i painted describe the things in it here's an owl and they like hearing the stories of why you painted something or how you came about painting something. it's important the story and so, so my important. wife and i can interact with customers while we have employees that are ringing things up packaging stuff up my wife and i can be running over here to do custom orders it's difficult to do it when you're in here by yourself not necessarily with this crowd but because there's nobody here right now but on yeah. on busy days you've got to do you got to do that yeah i'm gonna kind of blown away by is like one of my long repeated mantras is that everything that we're attempting to do online is just duplicate the ideal art buying experience offline which you have here already but i watch you walk through your entire product lineup there and it's it is apparent to me that being in a real world retail merchant has forced the level of sophistication in terms of lineup and pricing for you that's crazy and all of that applies online too right absolutely yeah, yeah. people will come into the store and go i wasn't really prepared to buy it that's why we create that brochure and of course we hand mm -hmm. out business cards and they'll walk away and think about it or we also have a sign up in here for people to sign up for our newsletter we do a monthly e-newsletter but mm -hmm. also to sign up for our social media mm -hmm. so we're posting on our social media and yes it's a pain in the butt to keep up with it but when you do it you'll see a rise in your online sales because top of mind awareness will have to go oh yeah I, I saw that art and I can't forget it and then they want to buy a piece where there, there's a question for you so given yeah. the town is so small and somewhat how small is the town again did you say it's 87 people in population it's one it's square people. mile yeah. yeah it's only one square mile so it's teeny tiny and we've had we've been a big part I, I was the president of the chamber I've been a big part to promote hey you guys don't come here just literally the antique show is about three weeks long I'm like we're more than just being here you one know, horse six weeks out of yeah. the year we've got stuff to do year round I'm, I'm a i'm a sponsor we're doing a big event on june 8th that's going to be right out my back door the event is basically it's like a wedding reception but nobody has to get married we've got a band out of austin
Austin called Satellite. We've got dinner created by Royers and the Truth Barbecue people here. It's called Merit Meat Company. We've got Ellis Motel, the bar there. They'll be supplying the drinks. Kimasabi, which is, they're based in Aspen, but they are luxury Western goods. We're selling tickets for $100 a person where you get the dinner, the dancing, drinks. It's a hell of a deal, but it helps promote people coming to town. And when you have an, an evening event like that, people will book lodging. So it's good for the lodging crowd. And when they're here, they're going to shop, they're going to dine, yeah. they're going to drink. And that's how what we've done to create an environment where we get people to come to town to see my art, to buy my art, and let it go from there. I am such a strong advocate for art storefronts. I Patrick can tell you, I don't own anything in the art storefronts. I pay my money just like everybody else to be part of storefronts, art storefronts. But I see it as such an incredible tool that without it, I would not be selling the amount of art I sell. Just I've done it the other way where I've tried to self-fulfill and it, it, it's just it just doesn't work the same. And I would never be able to sell online in the way that I can with art storefronts. And to be able to have that option of, hey, look, I know you can't afford this $5,000 painting, but I can sell you an identical version of it framed for a fraction of the cost. And love it. And we make great money at it. It's it is. Yes, I am fortunate, 100 percent fortunate. But I, I it's not like I'm a trust fund baby and or I was picked up by some fancy gallery in New York and became famous. It's just grit. I just decided to open it and just do it. And I have to paint every day and I work hard every day, but it's fulfilling and taking advantage of the technology that our storefronts has invested in and gone out and sold. I think I, I try not to get preachy when I'm in the forums, but I think a lot of times people take for granted how much work is involved. And I do still own another business, so I'm quite a busy person, but I've long believed I've been self-employed. I'm 23. And when you start any business, it's just like marriage. It's about failure happens when you give up, period. You stop working at it. So you got to keep working at it. If you want to see this kind of success, be prepared to work your butt off on it. Anybody in the arts, whether you see singers or band, people in bands or writers, it's not the end of the journey isn't even success because I could say I've done it. I'm successful. You have to keep at it to stay successful. It won't keep coming to you. You, and you I are taking the words out of my mouth in every capacity imaginable, right? The consistency, the grind, how hard it is, the fact that it never stops, the fact that you can never quit. But ultimately, the number one thing that kills artists and photographers from realizing their dream is they just quit doing the grinding. That's it. Yeah, That's and, I, and you won't have that feeling of satisfaction. I, I shared this with the Art Storefronts community that restaurant came in. Now, they're part of, it's a restaurant in a hotel in College Station, Texas A&M Hotel and Conference Center. They had revamped their restaurant and it's a beautiful place and they wanted my art in there and originally were considering just originals but number one they weren't big enough the ones they liked or i had sold many of the originals that they liked so they did an order of it was a twenty thousand dollar order i gave them 20 percent off and now they've hung those in the restaurant and now they're looking at possibly another fourteen thousand dollars worth to add into the hotel of more of that artwork and then the other side is they have a gift shop and i'm going to take some of those little miniature canvases like i was showing earlier these that are on the wall of the images that they have hanging i'm going to take an example of each one of those miniature jaclays and say hey why don't you sell these in your gift shop and i yep. bet you all they'll jump on it i bet you think they will jump on it because people are going to sit in that restaurant see those images and i'm very lucky because they want me to put a little placard with my name and business name with the artwork that's good to our code too hopefully yeah and it's all because i put my shingle out here not knowing if anybody like my artwork or not many people in your group have probably heard of bucky's the gas station of course i'm sure you have been in Same thing. they came to they came to round top about a year and a half ago Go and came in the gallery and said, Hey, we really like your artwork. We'd like to sell it at Bucky's. And I was like, you mean in the bathrooms? I, I don't think so. They talked me into it. And so now I'm in, they have close to 40 stores. I'm all across the country and they all my artwork in the bathroom. Now I only make 5% of those sales and they're selling hundreds of jaclays. Mm -hmm. So I'm not making my check. My, my check this month was $400 from them. So it's not like I make a lot of money. What else happens? Read I get, they call me. They say, Hey, I saw your work at Bucky's. They find me. I saw your work at Bucky's. And then I direct them to my art storefronts website and go, 
hey, you can purchase online. They're like, awesome. And then they see all the variety I have because Bucky's only carries like eight of my images. Mm-hmm. And again, that that is luck. You To be successful in business, you have to have luck, but you're going to have bad luck and good luck. And it's how you take advantage of the good luck, I think, that makes all the difference. But not uh, all luck is not all luck is the same either. People hear luck and they think dumb luck, right? Like you walk down to the roulette table and you put your money on black and boom, it right. hits that. And that's a type of luck. But there's also a luck that comes from residual grinding, right? Yes. From doing the hard work. And that luck is far more impactful. I got, I, I have two questions for you. One, I want to get yeah. it out now. Thank you for all the compliments on our storefronts. We love it. But if there's one thing that we can improve about our storefronts, just one thing, what would that one thing be? That is a great question. I don't know if it's necessarily on your end or not, but I there's some real inconsistencies in shipping costs. I think everything, mm-hmm. when I order 20 canvas jacques, they group it together, send it out in one package. Mm-hmm. But it's weird when you order a coffee mug and I'm trying to order 40 coffee mugs for the store. And if they charge $5 for a coffee mug to ship it, that's five times 40. It makes no sense. Right, and I talked right. to Aaron mm-hmm. about this. So there's some things, same thing with t-shirts. It's like, they're only set up. There should be a way that I can wholesale order. And if I'm ordering multiples, they should stick it in one box. I shouldn't yes. pay their standard shipping costs for each t-shirt. Yeah, I think that's the one of the biggest things that my wife and I complain about. So much so that, so like these acrylic trays, the, the costs, and we order multiples, get it in the camera here. We order multiples, but you're paying a lot of money per unit. And so it's made us, even though we sell out of these as soon as we get them in, we don't want to put a gigantic price tag on it because it makes no sense. We've got a price for $82 mm-hmm. and we're probably only making $20 on that. That's just wrong. Okay. I'll go to work on that. I'll go to work yeah. on that one at this call. That's one of those things. I saw somebody else post on our storefronts. It was a photographer who's mm-hmm. gone into a gallery and they've given them a nonstop 40% off discount coupon so they can order product for their own gallery mm-hmm. in a kind of a wholesale manner. But for people like me, I want to be able to have that interaction with our storefronts. So it's not tricking the system, but finding a way for a vendor like me to be able to order multiples of a product and not pay. I understand an automated way why you go, okay, every time you buy a coffee mug, it's we're going to put $5, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It costs the whole system is set up for one-offs, right? Yeah. The whole system is set up. That's like the, the dream of the, you're out of that realm a little bit. But we'll, we'll I'll talk with Aaron and Nick. We'll figure out what this wholesale thing is because we really tried to get it going on with the cell phones. Have you heard my rant about cell phone cases, by the way? I have not. Okay, because I, I, I really need to get it on your mind. I'm very curious. So I don't know if you have an iPhone or an Android, but on these things, there is a screen time report, okay? And the screen time report tells you how much time you're using on the various different apps. But yeah. it also tells you how many pickups a day you average. And the phone measures how many pickups. Now, you and I are roughly, you're close to the same age. For us, what do you think the average number of pickups is per day? Gosh, a thousand. I don't know. It's going to be a lot. A day. Okay, I'm way off. But... The millennials the millennials below us is over two a day. Oh, and wow. So I see that and I contemplate that and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is the single solitary best advertisement an artist or photographer can have in today's day and age. I'm going to the point now where I think the cell phone cases is the most important piece of merch that you can sell. Oh, you've got them already. Yeah, yeah that's our in-store like uh, point of purchase. So it's happened to be some of my old phone cases that because I go through them. I show you my phone now. That's a picture when my wife and I took. So we sell those in the store. Same thing. They're not a huge money maker for us. It doesn't matter. It does matter. I, John, but I they're would, walking I would, around I going, and remembering it. They're showing people. 150 yeah, times a day. The, yeah. I don't like. I don't think. I don't think that there is another piece of merch that can get that type of exposure for your art. You don't need to make money on it. I would go as far to say I would probably, if I was in your shop, raise the price, wholesale cost of the cell phone case on every single solitary order that you have, on every piece you have in there. And if they purchase, they leave with one because it's the advertising is just too powerful. They sit down, they put the phone on the table, and everyone starts talking about it. Conversational piece. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah. 200 times a day, they're reminded of the whimsical art of, of John Lowry. So it's, wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. A big deal. And keep things from it, being boring. I'm walking around showing. No, and I love it. And it makes sense to me because I'm so entranced as the viewers are by the fact that you're just walking through here and showing us all the areas and that how cool all of it is. You are leaving so much money on the table on your digital marketing efforts. And I can see the only way that we're going to get you there is you're going to have to hire someone that does it for you. Because Absolutely. You'd My be, God. You'd be you running live art shows in here. I need, I pull up your socials john and okay you've got 3800 followers on instagram okay which is terrible 
oh, these are first world problems. You're struggling here because <laughs> your business is doing so well. I don't see any social proof here. Like you're in a restaurant by Texas A&M. You're in Bucky's, which has got its own cult following. I want to know about mm -hmm. that. And then my goodness, what you've taken is even just sitting in here is essentially a live art show. You can do these any point yeah. in time. Like do this for me. And I got to see if I'm, you'll still be able to hear me. But I want you to walk through the originals area just like okay. you did the last time because I want okay. people to see how profoundly powerful that walking through on video can be. Okay. Yeah. So again, this, we have the main part of the store. That's the original part of the building where everything in here, it's very, oh wait, I'm sorry. I had it on my face. It's very white walls. We built a gallery space back here where we put wood on all the sides and built a little room. This is our Jaclay storage room, which I can show you that again. And I'm sorry if the music's too loud. It's good. Just keep going. You okay. It's like so compelling. Just the fact that you broke up the colors between the two immediately establishes for me like the value proposition of it exactly. raises the level of like instantaneously of what we're seeing and what you're showing. This is just it's a it's just fantastic space. It's a higher grade of product. It costs more. I share. And we do this on our website too, by the way. I write a story of every painting that I do. Amazing. And on our website, the Art Storefront's website, I put those stories on there as well. People love a story. This is a friend of mine. We had dinner with him last night. We're at the Gage Hotel. We'd been on a motorcycle trip. This is in Aspen, the Maroon Bells. I was there for an art show and my wife and I went on a hike and I used her as my model, which she hates it when I use her as a model, blowing on a dandelion that's turning in the clouds. But I tell the story story and that's what people love. I've got this thing and this that kind of explains it says I am obsessed with painting and the idea of bringing something creative to the world that never existed. I present my paintings humbly with the hope that someone besides my mom will love them. Love that. So that's the statement of who I am as an artist. I take my craft seriously, but I don't necessarily take myself seriously. That's why it's called Humble Donkey Studio. We have gotten some press from time to time and I laminated those to show people i'm gonna show you something else that's a funny thing that my mom gave me this trophy when i was 10 mm -hmm. and i made this case for it and it says number one artist and i have a little description i call it major award just like at a christmas story and i describe that to me there's no proof on whether that applies to the world or to the united states or just among my siblings that i am the number one artist but it is just meant to be a cute fun thing of course and the fact that i saved it but that's another thing that people get a kick out of i i think it's so important and we could do a better job just like you're describing in social media is people like that personal connection and that's why going to art uh, art shows is so important even if you don't do great directly at the show because i've had art shows where i've had disappointing results but it's the connection you make with people and then becoming a follower of your emails and your social media that eventually you're going to hit a piece that they go oh my god i can't live without it i really like that guy it makes me feel good or whatever but any little opportunity you have to tell a story or share something about yourself i think is also critical i i loved the one little door you showed me i want to go back and i want to ask you a question about it that faces out to the courtyard from oh, yeah. from and so you're telling me there's a barbecue joint out there where people yeah. are ordering food and boozing and then that door's just open and they can just take a break they're waiting for their table whatever and just saunter right i'll take you out now here's the thing is when we started number one this was an addition we added this was not here mm -hmm. and back behind here there was nothing here we were here before any of this stuff existed and you know so for a while this was going on and we didn't have the entrance that i'm going to turn around and show you so you can see it's terrible it's wet and yucky so we added this entrance and the little porch back here and i actually put some banners which we sell of my artwork people put on barns and things but yeah we decided to join the party and be part of this there's no party today because it's rainy and yucky in fact it was my association with kimasabi who's here behind us and i've been a customer of theirs up in aspen but they had me do a couple of different art shows there and a, and a year-long show that kind of exposure added credibility to me as an artist because they go yeah that guy was in aspen or at kimasabi and that's one of those opportunities. I wouldn't have had that opportunity had I not decided to open up a store yeah. here in Round Top on a whim with not a plan. And that was 750 a month. We're paying probably 3000 a month now for this space. 
Can you buy, and, will they sell you the building or have you not gotten into that? That will never happen. The people that own this square, mm -hmm. they own the whole thing and they would never sell just this one building. If this building was owned by one, an individual, and this was like the only building they owned, mm -hmm. that could happen. What's going to happen is when these people sell, they're going to sell the whole entire square. And this is one of three or four squares in Round Top. We're the biggest and mm -hmm. we've, I'm going to show you if I can, the cabin right there in the middle, that is the very first cabin we were in just this little bitty oh. square foot but i'm walking around here and this is what's funny this is friday all these stores are supposed to be open this is the pie shop and that's another advantage we have we're next to a pie shop that people come in for pie that mm -hmm. was here before we were here this is the front of ellis motel ellis motel is a bar and it's a great bar and it doesn't necessarily mean that crowd comes in this shows you the full outside of our building oh the you banners just, look so good can you go get yeah those are amazing. Where did you get those printed? So those are printed on an outdoor vinyl material. Got it. And they hold up pretty well for about two to three years. I change them out about every six months here on the store. They cost, I, I have a vendor in Houston that does them. Each one of those cost me about $120 shipped to me. And then I sell them for $100. Reasonable. And it's just great advertisement on the outside. It dresses the building up. Yeah, when you're walking around here and you go, what's that building? The front porch, I did do a mural of the Lord. It's hard to be humble which it really is hard to be humble speaking yeah. of humble this was a new design i did where it's got humble inside the donkey and i put that on my sign out front but selling that on the hat every signage makes a big difference you know this may be an old dowdy barn but i feel like how we've dressed it up it looks like a fun place things like that help legitimize your art 100 yeah. just amazing i gotta ask you because i love and by the way i have so many like i'm just going through this whole tour and knowing what you have available to you blue ocean of underutilized social media mark you're gonna have to hire somebody so i want you to start thinking about that <laughs> yeah um, it, it, it has to happen and it might as i'm thinking things through you might even need a video guy too and i think you'll be able to make it pay i'm Those just showing some things as we walk yeah. around these are cards that we have with my art on them yeah got me on the back too again it's like what you're talking about like when people buy a card yes do we make money selling cards sure it's got my name and who we are and they're gonna send that out to people and people go who is that what is that it it all a lot of products do help further advertise you and promote you and customers let me ask you that across the board from the low end to the high end how many individual new customer transactions are you averaging a month so like how many new customers i.e email addresses i.e people you can market to are you acquiring in a month do you know that number loosely i don't know it loosely i would bet we acquire about 100 emails a month mm -hmm. and as far as our social media goes in the last two or three months we've added 200 or maybe people that's been pretty slow we know there are a lot of things we could and should be doing to grow that part of our struggle is and we were talking about again this morning is we're spread too thin i can't even keep up with painting I used to be able to man manage 20 paintings for sale in my gallery and I'm down to 10 right now. And it's almost like you cringe when people sell them. It's more exciting to me now, honestly, when people buy Jaclays because I don't have to do anything. And that's what's exciting. And commissions are one of those things too that drive me crazy. I just finished the commission. I charge more for commissions. I charge $4 a square inch for those. Like I might sell a 30 by just in my gallery there for 3,000 or $3,200. Depends on what it is, $3,400. Mm -hmm. I just did this mission same size for forty eight hundred dollars wow so it makes it worth my time but i still scan that image and yep. it'll become a jaclay so it'll make money after that john that was absolutely as good <laughs> of an ending as we could possibly get back to your store and to be continued thank you guys very much i appreciate it uh, anybody can reach out to me with any questions i'm having to chat with anybody sounds good that was absolutely hilarious you can't stage that all the way down all the way down to greeting customers with how he does it man i need to do more of these and in side note like for anyone that just wants that how good that was how compelling that was like i need to send a video crew out there to properly film his entire operation so i've got a huge to-do list those of you who are watching thank you so much have an absolutely wonderful friday and see you again soon